I've actually seen someone uh, live while dancing at a powwow and recording herself, which was pretty awesome. Almost as awesome as the time I saw the beaded glucometer case that was pretty yeah. close to us. All right, y'all. Um, Um, the um, goal of the Home Language Project was to uh, cultural revitalization through language work. Um, I'm here as a member of the United Nomination and not representing the United Nomination. And I'm here with Joe. Uh, my name is Joseph Barrett, and I am currently working on uh, the Language Project and uh, putting together uh, resources for the children and um, working to revitalize our language. And, so the cool thing about um, being native in the, in the current situation is geographic location. Uh, everyone's you know spread out across the world, so it makes for really cool moments like this moment, um, where we've talked a lot on the internet, and today was the first day we met in person uh, after <laughs> like months and months of talking on the internet. So we're just going to have a real conversation about the stuff we haven't been talking on the internet, and you guys are going to just be our um, so, my first question was why not? So, you seem to be doing a lot of tweets and memes in, in Yama. Why did you choose that? Um, more or less due to the lack of uh, Homa language that we have left. Um, the closest to it would be Yama. Um, and we, we, as a nation, spoke Yama uh, in, uh, in order to communicate with other tribes uh, who also spoke Yama. Um, and for me, the language is very important. The language is the identity of the people, and if the language dies, uh, the history of the people die, and the people themselves will eventually die out. Um, and, and so, Yama in Yama is another word for Mobilian dialect. Yes. So, Mobilian dialect was a trade language of the area. So, it's kind of a pigeonation mm -hmm. um, from what we understand. It's like um, Muscovian, like less grammar, less like infixes, um, less tenses. Um, so, I think the big question that I have for you is I've seen, like, you do some super cool Facebook stuff. <laughs> Not only are you, are you adding the Sakumoma Facebook group that, that Johnny um, has put together, um, but you're also putting, like, you say a lot more than anyone else in the group. Um, particularly, you will get on and you will write things in Yama and put it out into the world in ways that I was always afraid to do. What are you talking about up there and how, why do you do that? Um, so what I'll do is uh, I'll put together phrases um, and I'll have different categories. I'll have weather, um, house, things around the house. Um, and just how to use those words, uh, pronunciation, and um, try to put that out there. And uh, also, uh, history. Without without our history, the language would would not exist. And um, so, I like to put all that together into into one and to share that because I think a lot of a lot of it is a lack of resources for our people. Um, and I just like to put what I have for myself out there for our for our home people, um, so that they have a better understanding of who they are and where they come from uh, as an indigenous people. When I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about the future, um, I, I guess when I'm talking to you, I also need to mention your fantastic wife, Ashley, that I met uh, earlier today, who has her own incredible story. But um, when I'm thinking about the future and I'm thinking about um, children or you know the next generation, um, I know the mountain that we're trying to get to with the Home Language Project, but what do you see as, as what would you want for the next generation language-wise? For me, what I would like to see, uh, you know, for myself is to, I guess, learn, learn all that I can in order to pass it on. And uh, just today, when I heard the, the importance of uh, of what we have in our language, uh, you know, that really it, it hit me right here. And um, for myself, I would like to be that person in the recording, so that way that 
the next generation or the you know, next five generations will be able to hear those recordings and and be like, wow, that you know, that's where I come from, you know, and, and I can understand it, you know, uh, to to build up a point where that they understand and that they are speaking the language at that point and and um, and in that way. And what I'm thinking, you know, thinking about being that next generation, you know, they were talking about how, of course, um, there's the Hanchachi Ch Bo song, um, which is more of a children's song, and then there's also the Kankabina blessing that, that, you know, we have. Um, but if you were that person who could choose, what would you, what would you want to sing about if you were going to, to create a song for the next generation? Mm. Mostly, Probably the, the land and the water and the animals and even the people, just a whole mix of songs, uh, primarily based on our uh, geographical region and, and the people. And I guess the last question is, you know, like it's really weird to be here with these like stand up comic lights and stuff, and it's hard to be vulnerable in the space. But if we were going to be vulnerable, like one thing we need to admit is that we don't have all the resources to do this. Right. Um, and we're thinking, you know, in thinking about that vein, what are some things that you could find that would help you do your work or help you make that song for the next generation? Mm -hmm. That's that's. together more often to come up with ways because just one person it's, it's really hard for one person to and I like what um, my, my grandpa used to tell me and, and what uh, I keep to heart is that it, it takes two or more people to keep a language alive and you know that you know one person may know some things but that other person will know something else that they may not know uh, so you know it, it, it's all about the community coming together in, in order to Yes, want to play, play more for me to connect this one. Um, what would you like to see um, done through this pro <coughs> project? Like the mountain, like the next generation? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that um, I'm a bit of a pessimist, and like I would want people to feel comfortable identifying with their native heritage mm -hmm. in a way that um, our grandparents weren't comfortable for various reasons. Um, I feel like there was a there's like a definitive erasure of of um, native heritage. I don't know if it extends past South Louisiana, but I definitely know it's there. Um, and it was it was I'm grateful for that protection um, that was given to us, but I would like to afford the next generation um, the ability to connect, first of all, have avenues to connect with their language, um, connect with their culture, but um, also appreciate that and appreciate the, the, the complex history that that brings, the, the sorrow, the tragedy, the joy, the pain, um, and allowing people to do that. I think that that um, I think that I, I want to keep our I think that waiting for federal recognition is like waiting for other people to validate our existence uh, in a way that we shouldn't wait for. <laughs>
looks like to have a, when I think about like language acquisition, um, a lot of heritage language learners, like people who learn a language speaking it at home, what would it look like to have a, a school or something or what structures would need to be in place for there to be the next generation of children to grow up speaking Yama as their first language? I'm kind of pessimistic about that. I think that it would have to be two generations away for that reform to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that within the next generation, we can create enough documentation to create a corpus and to create you know, a grammar or a structure that we could use, but I think that that's a lot of time to work. Um, I think that it would be more time than any of us have to do that for the next generation. Um, and I can't say what the generation after that is going to decide to do. Um, they would have to, but I, I know that they would have to, in order for a language to be used, um, you have to be emotionally connected to it. You have to have people to talk to, and you have people that that also speak the language. So it takes community connections, it takes shared experiences, um, and it also takes love. Um, so those are the things we would have to develop. I have a question. What do you think is the role of technology and uh, language acquisition right now? <laughs> no, I think that that's. And you want to talk about that? Because you're like. For technology wise, you know, recordings, audio, and uh, video, because uh, our language is a living language, so we have a lot of, um, you know, emotion that goes into that, uh, whether it's uh, body emotions or uh, facial, you know. Um, but I think, I think technology will help, you know, in the long run, like to pass this on um, and preserve it uh, for you know as many generations as you can talk. And I think that that's the unique, cool thing about this project is that, you know, what we're, we're talking about a, a tribe or a collection of people that are, you know, spread out across Louisiana Gulf Shop. Um, and so that makes uh, creating digital cultural spaces incredibly important and, and intrinsic to language revitalization. We were just talking uh, earlier before we got on stage, we found we're gonna start a, a bi-weekly Google Hangout that's gonna practice language. Um, but you know, like creating culture, creating creating these digital spaces. Um, I know that um, Jessica Parquet is doing work on migration, um, and the idea of how cultures change when they migrate. Um, so there was a migration to where we are now, but with climate change, um, there's going to be an inevitable migration to other places. Um, and so, you know, solving the issue of uh, creating meaningful digital communities is only going to get more important. <laughs> Thank you so much, Haley. For wow, that was... Every time I run into you, I, I 